progressive Delta adventures. The start of our dunes experience into the Namok Desert. Do not think you see my Is it just this end for neutral where you start the quad and where you park it? That is forward and that is reverse. Throttle, you've got to keep it all the time. Yep. These are both brakes. Right hand is the front brake, this is the rear brake. You can use them simultaneously. But now it's into the dunes with fun. You can see elephant coming through and here you see it very nicely. But all these round, almost all these round things. Uh, On our very, first very stop, he shows us ancient elephant tracks and explains how the region was formed so millions of years ago. The process ago. of desertification was long drawn and, and later on the river was just a, almost a dry riverbed like today. And uh, then the scientists say about four million years ago, there was again a very wet, very wet spell. Now this river originates in the Komasuhan to the west of Vintuk and it rained a lot there. Mm -hmm. Now why it rained I couldn't find, I couldn't find reason because the cold water was already in place. But they say it was a fact it rained a lot and the river was constantly full of water again. That same period, about four million years ago, the sea of sand to the north, to the south of the river that is moving north all the time, reached this river. Was it second last, the third last, there's some layers to the bottom, but the third last, the, the last little bit of, of sediment was full of iron oxide and it, it, it hardened, it corroded. There you see a track of a springbok and there are little turns. Uh, remember that was near the beach. We're off again. The desert is so vast, you get an incredible feeling of being totally alone. Fani explaining to us that we must use full throttle up the next steep section. Next, it's a test of nerves, sliding down the high 62 degree slope of a walking dune. Back break, you see, just, just like a sliding. Sliding down. Yeah, you want to, yeah, you want to uh, wiggle it. This is the dune we're coming back. Let me tell you, this is higher than it looks. Here comes Stuart. As the dunes walk, many things from the past are uncovered. These bones are probably from someone from the sand tribe. A jackal watering hole. This was another Various artifacts. Baleen from the bone of a whale. They cut the fruit in two, but it had a hole in the middle. They also use a piece of, of leather string to, as a needle. Brass beads. The child's grave. The narrow plant is the only one that is not enveloped by the walking dunes. You see it growing up the face of the advancing dune and here it's growing over the top. It's called tok toki because in the mating season it sits on the ground tok 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 tok.
a small slope this time. Was that good? Okay, yes. good job. Fani shows us a muscle midden. This area that used to be close to the sea. Reason, this piece is the only intact parts of the mud. The oil is eroded away. But here in the mud that is fossilized, you see some mussels. So all the mussels were lying on the mud. And this little pool but is all that is left of the mud. Yeah. And then, then this stone was lying around. There's another one somewhere. This is now the red granite that formed the base of the delta. Very hard. And they use this to sharpen muscles. It fits perfectly. Oh. And they must have sharpened a lot because they didn't have knives. They use it for knives today? Yes. Must have. Thousands of muscles. The narrow plant that climbs over the dunes. Look at the capillaries in the roots and the fruit. The tree you see in the middle of the picture also copes with the dunes. As they encroach, the tree grows taller and taller and eventually sticks out of the top. But as the dune moves on, it dies. This is Samuel, the Topna tribe's chief. Some of these people live here. They put the pips of the nara fruit on the net to dry. Samuel and his secretary speak the language of the Khoisan for us. What a terrific morning. Goodbye to the Nam of Desert. <laughs>